Yarn Gang, Nikkei Bunny Cross Oxford here with another Diary of Me video. Welcome! Um, you may be wondering why you're staring at a steaming pot dye bath rather than um, my usual standard clear um, pot of, of water that you see. Um, and it's because I thought I was filming, so I'd kind of already started this video and then I realised I hadn't actually press, pressed the um, recording button. So um, this is take two for me. Um, and today is going to be a, a relatively quick one. Again, it sort of continues on from playing with Jacquard's um, Gunmetal Grey. Um, I think it's grey. Hold on, let me get the bottle. It just says gun metal, which makes me think grey. But um, as we've discovered in other videos, uh, not really grey. It's a sort of bluish grey, going towards navy maybe. Um, it, it looks like it's sort of may break, but it could also just be in my head. So what I thought we could do is a bit of a dip dye session. So in here, I have a damp um, sock skein of 80% merino, 20% bamboo. Um, so I've already played with this fibre type once using the same colour. And I thought it would be really nice to have a complementing skein that is the gradient. Um, because I think the two of them would make a really nice shawl where you have one of the skeins where you have this sort of pooling effect and the other one is just pretty much solid. Um, so the skeins are really long as well. Let me just see if I can show you. So when I fold it, it's as long as I'm used to a single skein being normally. So this is going to be really cool because it means I have a bit more yarn to play with. Um, and it means that... The gradient will hopefully be a little bit more gentle. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to start dip dyeing and see what happens. So in here is um, 14 cups of water. I don't know why not 16. Um, I think because it's I'm reusing the dye bath as well. So some of it is evaporated. So there's like 15, 14, 15 cups of water, two tablespoons of citric acid and one quarter one half of a teaspoon of the gunmetal um which is just over a gram of dye it's like 1.1 or something so and so yeah see what i mean so it starts off as gray but then it goes blue so i'm very excited about that i'm also excited to see how bamboo may affect effect um the process so i'm just going in and i'm moving it around and just a little bit more i'm just going to come back out and a bit more tangled tangled so yeah, as I'm going up, it's still sort of grey. Um, let's see what we have so far. We have a very, very, very dark grey. Um, and then up here is very reminiscent of silver grey. Um, and to be fair, so the lady that I'd get my Jacquard dice from didn't have any silver grey left at the time so she was like well you can you can easily replace it with gunmetal it's a little bit more pigmented but um at smaller quantities as it were um it does the same job I can see why she'd think that but it's starting to get a bit of a blue hue. The water is still very dark. 
So I'm just going to keep going a little bit slower. It's getting a little bit more, uh, what's the word, pastel, let's see where the pot is at, okay so the pot's looking really blue now, so let me see if I can get this out of the way without dripping everywhere, okay so here it's starting to get, can you see it's starting to go blue, but at the top we still have the silver grey effect, um, the pot of water, I'm just going to put that here, you can see is looking really blue. So let's see what that does for the little bit of white that we have left. I'm still going to, I'm still not going to drop the white just yet. I feel like there's a lot more I can... Okay, so I don't think there's a lot of pigment left. Um, it looks dark, but so I'm just going to drop that in, move it around, move it around a little bit this way. So we're definitely, I'm definitely getting a very periwinkle feel now up here, just like a very gentle, gentle periwinkle. So I'm just going to put that in. And again, if I try and move the darker bit of the yarn away, you can see, so you can see the water, it's really quite blue. Um, and yeah, this, this bit at the top is, is looking quite sort of, there is a greyness to it, but there's also a lot of sort of blue tones. So, just going to keep moving it around. I make sure that that little bit of white has the chance to get colour in it. This is going to be a bit tangled when it comes out, but when it dries, it'll be fine. So I'm going to leave this here for 15 minutes and then we'll come back to see whether the bath is cleared and the colours that we're getting. But I'm getting a lovely sort of... Is between periwinkle blue and a, and a, a um, pastel version of navy blue. It's it's very interesting. It's very beautiful as well. So, yeah, this is exciting. I'm going to put the lid on. It's got a bit of water in there. And uh, I'll see you in 15 minutes. Hey, hey. So, it's been 20 minutes. <laughs> I got distracted by my book. Um, I am reading... Court of Rose, Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Thank you very much, um, Ray, for recommending that. Uh, needles at the ready. And what have we got? Let's see. So, oh my God, this is the most beautiful blue. Hold on, let me untangle this a little bit. This is genuinely. Let's do that because it straightens it out. I mean, it's coming across as a little bit, will you see it if I turn this off? Yes, a little bit better. So it's coming across grey, but it's also coming across as blue. I'm I'm a little bit confused by this colour. My eyes are telling me two different things. You can see how blue it is here. And you can see when you put it against the dark, the darker bit, that it is blue. It's just, that, so, depending on the light, and what it is next to, it changes colour. Um, the dye bath is almost clear. Let me turn the light back on. Um, well, the dye bath is actually clear. It may not look clear, but that's because the pot is stained from having a lot of very black yarn in it recently. Um, but it is quite clear. So I'm going to leave this in here to cool if there's any other pigment left in there you'll pick it up and then we will um 
see what colour it actually is when it's dry because the other thing as well is it's coming out darker now than when it's dry when it, dry, it dries it will lighten up a little bit further so I will see you when this bad boy is dry bye bye let's turn the heat off we have some dry yarn and I am so in love with this oh my god so this I, I love how deep this is um and then I just how beautifully blue I'm going to call this baby blue or maybe duck egg blue but also very blue again this is round two of me playing with this colorway with this color this is Jacquard's um gunmetal it was recommended to me there's a previous video that's gone out about this um and I'll try and link it or I card it or something but it was recommended to me as a replacement for silver grey now do I have something that's silver grey here for us to compare because I didn't do it with the other video yes I do oh. that be silver grey yo so silver grey so this is this is the sort of similar effect where we've got very concentrated and not so concentrated let's get this so this is chips lemon pepper for anyone wondering you can watch me dye this in one of the other videos let's untangle this um they are orange speckles running through the grey but it's still grey so yeah this is silver grey this is gone metal and this was recommended to me as a replacement for this. Uh, I think not. Like, really think not. I'm so glad that I didn't actually ever use it as a replacement. I would have made a mess of orders. People would have been unhappy. I would have been unhappy. Um, I mean, could have listed them as errors. But, oh well. Oh, so many skein twistings. So, um, just a quick reminder from the beginning of the video, this, uh, the yarn is the 80% merino, 20% bamboo. Um, and, uh, bamboo, as we have spoken in other videos, is a cellulose fibre and therefore cannot be dyed in the same way that you would dye protein-based fibre. So, protein-based animal cellulose plant, that simple. Um... You can dye cellulose fibres, it requires something called a mordanting process. Um, so when you have yarn like this, where it's a com combination of one and the other, you get the cellulose fibre remaining white. Um, because of the way that this has been mixed together, it's not just a strand of white, you can see this sort of beautiful kind of heathering you can see the whiteness kind of going through in in bits and pieces and i love it the other thing that the bamboo is doing oh god let, i'm making such a mess of this game let me twist it and then so we can see the beautiful progression as well and i'll be right back to talk about it right so here it is um so and you can really see it now when I hold it up. The other thing the bamboo is doing is it's giving it this beautiful sheen. Um, it's a very, very lovely soft yarn. Um, it is not very tightly spun. So when I'm knitting with it, it does split a little bit. Look at those colour. Look at that colour contrast. This is going to pull beautifully. Um, I think this would be really nice in the shawl with its cousin which is this one, which is the first one that we dyed as a solid. I think, yeah, if you just sort of do that, I think they look beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's, I love this yarn. I think I will probably um, start making it as a standard option. Um, I really, really, really enjoy working with it. I like the effect that you get. Um, it's very very subtle so when you knit with it it's just going to come through as a tonality it won't come through as these sort of white speckles or anything it just comes through a tonality of the yarn where there's just a little bit more sort of whitish 
Yeah, it's it's almost like it's like a sheen, you know. It's as as I said, rather rather than it being white speckles or a straight wide strand, it's just this sort of lighter sheen that runs all the way through, especially through the darker side parts. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed um this dip dyeing video and just playing around with this colour a little bit more and seeing how um how quickly it absorbs seeing the different sort of shades that you can get so this is i think almost a one and a half um depth of shade versus what i imagine is something along the lines of 25 um 25 percent so quarter if not lighter so yeah i i, I hope you enjoy this uh thank you for joining me for another week do hit the thumbs up um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe because it really, really helps me. Um, if you want to support me a little bit further, you can use the links below to either buy one of my lovely yarns or you can buy me a coffee. Um, you can also just visit the site and subscribe to the site. It won't cost you anything. Um, I'm hoping to be able to start putting up a little bit more sort of um bloggy like content up on the site as well so you can read about my projects my plans my hopes and insp uh, aspirations <laughs> which is just to knit knit more knit all the time um and yeah thank you thank you for joining me and i hope i will see you next week bye bye <laughs>